Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. This is Sundance 2019, and look, it's the filmmaker and the cast of The Mountain. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. We do. It's a fa we're very fancy here. Uh, sir, take me into this movie because I saw the word lobotomy and instantly I was like, I'm in. There's not enough lobotomy movies as far as I'm concerned. One of the most terrifying concepts I've ever found in my life. So from a young child, I think it was because my grandmother at one point was like, if you don't sit still, I'm going to lobotomize you. And then my mother told me what that was and I sat still for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, man, how did you come to the material? Uh, well, it's a, uh, how did I come to the material? I mean, it's a sort of an analysis of uh, some of the utopian problems of uh, the American kind, uh, and particularly the male American kind in the mid-century, and we see uh, a young man come of age uh, in the shadow of uh, a, a doctor in his decline, uh, set in, the in 1954, and Jeff plays Dr. Wallace Fiennes, loosely based on Dr. Walter Friedman, who invented the lobotomy. And uh, uh, Ty is his assistant who takes photographs, and his mother had, had been institutionalized, and the saga sort of unfolds. Yeah. Um, where did this come from? Well, I mean, I, my other movies, they, I, I'm, I'm sort of uh, uh, a bit uh, hung up on this, this, this this utopian drive in, 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 in the American psyche and uh, it, the problems that it's, in my opinion, sort of created throughout the world. What is the utopian the drive, the, the, the idea to make things well, that as there's, perfect that as there's possible? Well, that there's unlimited potential boundless opportunity and that there are no limitations to anything, you know, and uh, which is good for societies that, that, that need that, but America is a utopia, so that we just want to consume more and and go farther, and this sort of fuel is actually a little out of control. So uh, this is an effort to provide a counterweight, tamp it down a bit. <laughs> nice, man. That's what thoughtful filmmaking is. My whole life I've never understood. How do you put together a cast like this? When you're writing it, are you like, I'm writing it for Jeff Goldblum? Uh, well, there's a lot of emails. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you know how you put a cast together. It's uh, d different all the time, you know. But when you were working on it, did you know you were going to reach out for... No, I hadn't really, you know, in the initial, you know, I had worked with Ty in, the, in, the, in my previous film, Entertainment, mm -hmm. and uh, he, uh, so we had talked about doing something next, so I sort of I had him in mind, and then the, the, the Fines character was kind of a developing, you know, uh, ex ex experiment in conception. I would say you got insanely fortunate with this guy playing that part. He's a generous soul. Oh, sir, you are hands down one of our greatest treasures in this business of show. As an actor, you always make a choice that 99 other actors would never make. That's one of my favorite things about watching you. You find a way to deliver something and you'll do it like this and like suddenly you capture someone's imagination. Like you don't just do dialogue, you play it like, like an artist. Uh, I, you playing a lobotomy, a guy, the, the man who performs lobotomy, almost seems like odd typecasting in a weird way it, based on all of your, your work. How did you head toward the role? Well, <laughs> thank you so much. The, the luck is all on my side. Uh, uh, Rick Alverson is a brilliant filmmaker and a great thinker and a great artist. Ty is a wonderful actor, a special human being. It's a, it's a, it's a very l wonderful movie. I liked his other movies. You've got to see Entertainment and the comedy are the two that he'd done before that that I saw. Um, you know, like he says, it was taken from uh, uh, this real-life character, Walter Freeman, and he turned me on to research about that. Um, we were just lucky. And it's got other wonderful actors. Do you know Udo Kier? Yeah, of course. Is in it. Oh, my gosh. Treasure. Uh, treasure. Play, plays a treasure. Talk about an international cosmic treasure. Plays his father. And Denis Levant. Uh, it's a wonderful French actor. Wait till you see him in this. Just fa fantastic. As fantastic. an actor, do you... Do you collect other performances? Like, you notice other performers? And like, ooh, I like their work, I like their work. I do, I do. Really? Yeah, yeah. Do you still pull, like, for a guy who breaks ground all the time, can you look at other performances and find stuff where you're like, that's useful? Or 
are you kind of in a place now where you're like, look, I just do, I do Goldblum and I do it very well. No, no, no. I like to play characters. This part, part in, in that I, one of the things I liked about this is that uh, he, he's an actor's director and, and helped me find some character that was a field of uh, my straight behavior. Um, uh, but yeah, I like watching other actors. I learned a lot from Ty uh, watching and working with him. Likewise. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. He's deep and, and simple and very beautiful, lyrical and poetical. I was a big fan of Ready Player One. Um, what was it like heading into this? This world's different from that in terms of storytelling. No, thanks, man. Um, yeah, no, it is. Uh, but, you know, as Rick mentioned earlier, we did a film together called Entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's actually here at Sundance a couple of years ago. But, um, yeah, I just really enjoyed working with Rick, and I think... You know, he's, uh, as, as you put it, he's making thoughtful films. And uh, at this point, you know, I, that's really all I care about doing. And I think this movie really is about, you know, an exploration of uh, a lot of things, you know. And the, the protagonist, the, the character that I play is um, in some way very inaccessible. And I think we're not really used to seeing that and accustomed to seeing a narrative like this that, that really mm, kind of puts you through the ringer a bit, you know, like this movie... Um, it makes you think critically uh, about a narrative um, versus a lot of movies that, that don't. You know, it's something that's it's kind of almost spoon-fed to the audience in, in, in a very in a satisfactory way. But I think this movie really explores, uh, you know, different things, like sexuality, you know, male and female roles and, and how they integrate into society and what the, what the model is and what the box is that you're supposed to fit into, what that category is, and um, and also it's 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 about America in a lot of ways. And, and as Rick mentions, he was interested in exploring, you know, an anti-utopian kind of theme in the movie. And uh, and you see over the course of the film, we are going to these post-war mental clinics, and and uh, and he's you know has this procedure that's a you know, terrible procedure, and, right. um, but he's a doctor, and people, you know, trust the doctor, and uh, and uh, it's just a, you know, it's a very fascinating. I, uh, I love it because there's sort of, you know, I mean, people trust Goldblum, you know, and so p having him in that role, there is a parallel, you know, I'm the audience, you want the audience to to give in and say, do do with me what you will, and uh, in the in the in the context of the of the film, that the patients are saying the same thing, you know, I think there's some parallels between the. You know, uh, the, symbolically between the metaphor and what a, uh, how audiences are often pacified with cinema, uh, uh, you know, uh, narcotized and anesthetized by by cinema and go passive. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of procedure. You know, I, I, similarities. You see me because I I get turned on when filmmakers talk like that. Where I'm like, oh my god, because I never think like that. But filmmakers do. Like you tell a story behind the story with your visuals alone. Correct. Yeah, I mean, form. I mean, form is the is 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 suffering, big time because the content is just we, we all we have is content. Everybody moves right through the form, oblivious to it increasingly, and uh, we just go with the story, with the narrative, with the content, more of it, more of it, more of it. And when in fact that the formal elements, the you know whether it's composition or you know the choices that are made are what they're really affecting us, you know, and we're unaware of it, and that's sort of a frightening thing. Mm. Uh, you, you play a photographer in the movie, correct? Like you're taking photographs in the picture? That's right. I saw you running around here with a camera. Is that art imitating life or life imitating art? Um, I don't know, a little bit of both. I've always been, I've always loved taking pictures. Um, in the movie, he loves taking pictures. That's one of his lines. <laughs> no? I like pictures. Mm, yeah, I, I, I like, you like ha pictures. having my picture taken, I think. I like pictures of what I'm doing. I'm leaving behind my legacy, you know. And so I yeah. get him to... You know, teach him about the newfangled American ca camera, and uh, he he takes these pictures. Yeah, the Polaroid land camera. The Polaroid yeah. land camera. There's this there's a scene where he kind of explains, you know, how to use the camera, and uh, I mean I, I had I had a blast because it was you know it was one of those cameras that you you have to screw in the bulb and then it goes whoosh, and then it's, flat, and then it's done the and then you, yeah and so yeah. that was really fun and kind of. Yeah, it takes place in 1954. Period piece. You know, yeah, period piece. And he's taking pictures of these mostly ladies that I've just lobotomized. And I'm sometimes I'm putting makeup on to make look 
better, less swollen, you know. It's an American kind of uh, grotesque twisting of mm, <laughs> the facts and, uh, and myth-making, you know, and narcissism. How deep does one go into researching? Like, do you learn how to, not obviously do a lobotomy, but you have to learn where the hammer goes and all that stuff, probably more so than you would have ever looked into, like, of your own interest in your entire life. Of my own interest, I pre probably would not have ever fooled around <laughs> with a couple of things and thought, geez, I, what would this be like? Uh, no, no, no. But we saw it for the purposes of making it uh, seem credible. And anyway, once you get into it, it's very interesting and uh, frightening and alarming and uh, provocative. And we looked at uh, movies. There's footage of him doing it. So yeah, we had to figure out how to, how to do that. Um, you know, long career, man, that you've got. And you've got a very uh, specific uh, thing that you do, which is excellent. For those out there watching, give a piece of advice. How do they get to be, not Jeff Goldblum, but their version of Jeff Goldblum? How do they get to stay themselves in this business while still pretending to be a bunch of other people? Well, it's, golly, everybody's got a different uh, pa path, you know. I studied with a good teacher, Sanford Meisner, and he said, don't copy anybody, so I got good advice early on. I, I, you know, just uh, do it every day. I think you have to put in 40,000 or 100,000 hours, and, and uh, before you start to, I'm a late bloomer anyway. For me, I th you, I, you only start to find, my experience, start to find things when you do it all the time and keep digging and f finding something. and. So, something like that, but tr tr try it, you know, tr tr try it out, keep doing it. Beautiful. We got this winter hat right here, I mean, we put questions in it. We ask you to take that question, one of them from in the bag, and then everybody gets to answer this. I, I like this. <laughs> Do we all get any of the, Everyone answers the same out. question. Really? Okay. Yeah, it. it says, um, if you could star in a biopic about anybody, who would it be, Rick Alverson and Ty Sheridan? Who would that be if you could star in a biopic about anybody? Who would it be? Um, well, tie first. Tie, of course. No, 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 you go first. I'm still oh, thinking. Please, please. <laughs> How about you? You go, Jeff. Well, me, I, I, I don't Who know. Who have you always wanted to play? I don't know. I don't know. Um, biopic. <laughs> Irving Berlin, Dave Brubeck, Abe Lincoln. I'd play, I'd play all three parts, and I'd have same them all movie. in the same movie. I'd have them all meet First, up. Second, Very few act. people know that they were actually buddies. Yes, they were buddies. Contemporaries. Yes, yes, yes. Who would Rick Alverson be? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. A minute. <laughs> oh, I'd like to see you do. You know, you could be Thomas Jefferson or something. Speaking of the yeah. found, founding Little fathers, TJ. you know, or. Einstein, or one of the great, <laughs> great thinkers. You want to? You, you can answer for me, Jeff. You would be. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, oh, ah! He would play young Paul Newman. Young Paul Newman, oh, yeah. just nice. as he's starting out his career and he's auditioning for the Hustler. I don't know if that was as far as you know. <laughs> somebody up there likes me. Right around that time, coming out of the actor's studio. Starring Ty Sheridan as young Paul Newman, getting into race cars. Yes. He's, he acts and he casts. Give it up for the folks from the mountain, ladies and gentlemen.